Hey folks, how you doing? Uh, Tone Tony Viz is back here. This here I'm gonna be taking a special look at uh, a different kind of video. I'll be taking a look at last night's um, Ring of Honor Best in the World uh, eye pay per view. Um, great show. I absolutely um, I enjoy it every minute of it. I enjoy just about every every moment of it. Um, before I get into it, you know, I'm gonna say you know because you know Ring of Honor has been you know the last few pay per views they've had no technical issues and what uh, whatnot. Um, I had gotten the Border Wars show, and there are, of course, technical issues there, too. So because I got the sh I got that show, I got to see last night's show for free. <laughs> so, there's a plus there. Alright, um, overall, though, I thought, really, most of the matches were, really, most of them were really outstanding. You know, there were, like, two matches on the show that were easily tied for best match of the, best match of the, of the pay-per-view. Um... So we'll get, I think we'll, you know, we'll get onto it now. Um, it, start, it started out, you know, you know, Kevin Kelly, Nigel McGuinness just running down the card, I guess. Uh, and then um, first match was Briscoes versus Truth Martini's Guardians of Truth. Uh, so the Briscoes come out, except you know, for the match. Then Truth Martini comes out and he introduces the mystery opponents. You know, he says, "Oh, these guys are so feared." The so blah, blah blah. He can't mention their names. And then he brings out the Guardians of Truth, and it's two guys. In, all in black with these masks on, and they look like the they look like the executioners. Uh, later on, actually, on the PW Insider, I read that it was the it was the headbangers. <laughs> uh, but no one, I, I don't think anyone could tell it actually was the headbangers because they because uh, the fans in the Hammerstein Ballroom were chanting "Who are you?" But um, this match was all right. I mean, you know, the the Briscoes got the win. Um, for some reason, I don't know what happened, but the ropes were loose. Here and they, and it, and it really the ma the match was a little off because of it. Um, I think it was whatever something whatever it was that holds the ropes together. Uh, I think I think might have broken. Or I'm not sure what happened, but um, it was an okay match. Uh, what happened at the end was they were uh, wait what the hell happened? Uh, sorry for the folks. One was going to um, uh, Jay got one of the guardian one of the headbanger guardians up on his shoulders. Mark went up for the Doomsday device, and um, the Guardian guy attempted a roll through. Jay just dropped down one, two, three, and that was it. Um, so that was, you know, it was it was a short match. You know, it was it, it was decent, but you know, like I said, the, the rope because the ropes were loose, it was it it yeah really you could tell that they, that they were a bit off there with you know the, with what they were doing and everything. So. Um, then after the match, you know, they, they set up Truth Martini for the Doomsday Device, uh, one of the, yeah, one, but, um, the Guardians, you know, bail, you know, they, they yanked Truth away, and, you know, and then they just, you know, uh, one of the Guardians pushed Mark Briscoe off the top rope, they double teamed Jay for a bit, and then security ran in to break it up. Um, like I said, it was okay, but, you know, like I said, it was okay, but, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest Briscoe match I've seen, you know, it wasn't, um, you know, it, I'm not. I'm not taking anything from the Briscoes. But, you know, they're. Uh, I don't know why the ropes were loose. Uh, I don't know. Just, just unfortunate uh, happening there. So then, next match, you know, they fixed up the ropes. Uh, we get Eddie Edwards versus Homicide. Really, good, really good match. Uh, these guys really worked. Worked their. Um, you know, they they really worked hard here. They really gave it their all. Um, they performed, wrestled, whatever you want to call it. But they treated this match like it was the main event. A lot of big, good back and forth spots, flips here and there, you know, um, and what, and all that stuff, you know, the usual stuff you get from Homicide and Edwards. Uh, and then afterwards, I believe, yeah, I, I'm just doing some of this off the top of my head. I think that, no, the cop killer was during the match. I'm sorry. I'm think I'm getting that confused with the Ring of Honor TV there before. It. Um, so anyway, that was a good match too. And then we get to Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly in what they call the Hybrid Rules match. Uh, what happened? What this means here is that it just meant that there were no pinfalls. You could win by submission, knockout, ref stoppage, tap out, DQ, or count out. And uh, if you leave the ring three times, you DQ'd. That I didn't get. I mean, I don't know. I just, I just thought like all the sticks there were a little confusing. But uh, this was one of the two best matches of the show by far. Um, what happened, um, pretty much was that, you know, I think they were exchanging chops or kicks or whatever, and, and then just at one point, Adam Cole bled from the mouth like, like crazy, it was insane, uh, you know, I was like, you know, cause, uh, 
Kevin and Nigel were saying that you know that his front teeth were knocked out or whatever, but they, you know but they weren't. But uh, it was a really good match. Um, yeah, they went back and forth with a lot of MMA stuff and here and there and this and that. And then uh, eventually, you know, Cole, um, Cole locked O'Reilly in the figure four for the uh, submission win. Um, great, great, great match. Uh, really, really easily, you know, tied for uh, best match of the show with the main event, I thought. Um, so then afterwards, you know, uh, Adam Cole offers his hand to Kyle O'Reilly, and O'Reilly just smacks him, and he walks out. Uh, but I did hear that Adam Cole had to get stitched up. I, I forget how he's doing or whatever, but it was it was really great. It, you know, this is definitely one of the... Uh, this is must-see match, I, I gotta say. So uh, Then after that one, we got to uh, Finley versus Michael Ogan. Uh, this was more of a mat-based match, you know, after the... Uh, the, you know, after the craziness of the hybrid uh, match, uh, we got more of a mat, a mat based match up here. Um, Elgin got the pin, I think, after the usual power bomb that he does to win the matches. Um, but Finley looked they did, that's a good match too. You know, Finley looked good. He's you know 53 years old. And he's still he's still in really good shape, I think. You know, and, and you know Elgin is really good. You know, the guys got the guys really got all the makings of, of a you know. Of a breakout star, you know. I mean, the, the guy is really awesome, um, you know. So then afterward, you know, Finley extended his. And, oh, and before the um, match happened, they had pre recorded comments from the House of Truth, and Elgin told Roderick Strong and Truth Martini to stay in the back, and he, he, you know, fight filming himself. So, uh, so that was good. That was good too. Uh, so then after Elgin won the match, you know, Truth Martini came out, raised his hand, whatever, and then uh, Finley went to. He offered his hand to Elgin. And Truth Martini told um, Elgin not to shake Finley's hand. I bet, you know, Elgin, for being, you know, uh, he, sh he shook Finley's hand in any way, of course. And then um, Martini has a, you know, gets in Elgin's face about it. And then Elgin just, you know, kind of backs him into the corner and he pretty much, t you know, tells Martini not to tell him what to do or whatever. Uh, good stuff, too, you know. Like I, I said, I'm, I'm you know, it's, they're, they're really doing a good job to... Um, with uh, Michael Elgin here, I think they're, I, I think they're going to be making him uh, a babyface soon, uh, with the way they're uh, with the way they've had the promos and the interactions with Strong and Truth Martini going on. Uh, then they went to a 20-minute intermission and they just recap, you know, with some videos and stuff. Uh, then back to the then we go back to the show and out comes Prodigy Mike Bennett, Brutal Bob Evans, and Maria Canales, who look great <laughs> as always. Uh, and of course, since Maria and CM Punk used to be together, the crowd, the New York crowd, of course, again, chanted CM Punk. And Bennett pretty much you know, rags on the New York crowd. He mentions that he's from Boston. And, yeah, he was just, yeah, I don't even remember what the hell he was saying. It was this and that. You know, I'm, I don't know, Mike Bennett doesn't really do it for me that much. You know, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not taking anything from, from his in-ring ability, but I just find this character to be kind of, I don't know. You know, I mean, he's good at playing the arrogant jackass, but, you know, he's, you know, I don't know, I, it just doesn't work for me, I don't know. So then, of course, he and Maria, and Maria make out in the ring again, which we've seen God knows how often before. Okay. Then, uh, Mike Mondo came out, and, you know, he said he's from New York, and Mike Bennett is full of shiznit. Uh, he said that the first, Mondo said the first show he ever saw was at the Manhattan Center, and said that it's always, it's always been his dream to wrestle in this, in, in the build, in this building. So pretty much what happened is here, he challenges Bennett to, you know, he says, oh, you may not have, you know, because Bennett was complaining about not having a match on the show, so Bennett's like, I was like, oh, maybe we'll have a match, but we're going to have a fight right now. So then he says to Bennett, he says, after, uh, you know, I'll fight you, and, this, and then he says to Maria, I'll, he says, I'll fight you to Bennett, then to Maria, then I'll F you. <laughs> so <laughs> that was some line. <laughs> I mean, I so then they did some back and forth stuff, you know, eventually, um, I know uh, Mondo did a dive on the uh, off the apron onto uh, Brutal Bob, uh, and then the match actually uh, we actually apparently had an impromptu match. It was uh, it was actually a solid match. You know Mondo got the uh, inside cradle for the three count. Um, as, I, as I said, match was solid. Match was solid, and the cr and the crowd really popped for Ma for Mondo. You know, especially with, you know, with him making all the you know the New York references. Uh, good 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 match there. Um, then we get to the uh, three way. For the TV title, uh, you know, Roderick Strong defending against Tommaso Ciampa and Jay Lethal, who, who's one of my favorite guys in the business today right now. Um, what had happened was they're doing some kind of thing with where that House of Truth, you know, Truth Martini and uh, Prince Nana and 
or the Evans in the embassy or whatever or like teaming up or whatever. I don't know what the hell they're doing. But um, what happened here was uh, Champa was going to go for Project Champa on Roderick Strong. Prince Nana comes in the ring like he was running from someone. I don't even remember if he was. Uh, but then he came in and he just like tripped Champa. You know, he toppled over Tommaso Champa. Then Strong fell on top of him and he hooked the legs and he got the three count. So Champa was eliminated. And then right after that, uh, Lethal went for the springboard on Truth, you know, I guess to go for Lethal Injection. But Truth Martini hit Lethal in the back with the Book of Truth, which he went for a swing on, he went to swing it, swing it up with, uh, to Lethal earlier with the, you know, and uh, Lethal got out of the way. But here, you know, it was a good, a lot of work back and forth stuff happened here. Uh, you know, like I said, right after Ciampa got eliminated, uh, Lethal went for the springboard. Uh, Truth Martini hit him in the back with the Book of Truth. And then uh, Roderick Strong, I think, hit a suplex, like a vertical suplex into a backbreaker and got the three count. A good match. You know, it was a really good match. And, of course, Ciampa was really upset, you know, that Nana for causing him the match again. Um, I guess, I don't know if it looks like they'll be turning him face two and he'll be breaking away from the embassy or whatever. It looks like the House of Truth and the embassy are going to be a team. I don't know what they're doing. But, um, you know, me, I, I'm a big Jay Lethal fan. I was hoping to put the title back on him. Uh, you know, but eh, it, was still, it was still a really good match, you know. Uh, so then we get to the tag titles. All Night Express, ready, uh, Kenny King and Red Titus challenging the, the All-Age Tag Champs. Uh, Sheldon Benjamin, Charlie Haas, wrestling's greatest tag team. And the stick was here that if um, Benjamin and Haas got, got DQ'd, they'd lose the belts. So what happened was there was, some good, there was a lot of good stuff here in the match. You know, at one point, you know, Kenny, Kenny King did the uh, you know, baby face and peril that before getting a hot tag to Red Titus. Uh, and then um, at one point in, the, in, in there, um, I think the right back was turned or whatever, Kenny King tossed a chair into Shelton Benjamin to make it look like he was going to use it. But he didn't use, you know, of course he didn't use it. The ref saw him holding it, and I thought, and I thought oh God, no, don't end it with the DQ. This is going to be so lame. Then I think the right back was turned again. Uh, and then Red DDT Shelton on the chair. Got a near fall there. That was really good. I thought that was going to be the end of the match, but it wasn't. Um, and then toward the end, you know, Red Titus was busted open when, um, I think, I forget if it was Haas Benjamin or whoever, no, one of them, one of them bashed, uh, Red Titus in the head with the, uh, with, with the belt, and, uh, and then he was bleeding, he was busted open, he was getting, he was, he was getting the crap beat out of him for a while, trying to get the tag and everything, um, you know, Haas and Benjamin were double teaming him, and then they went to, they went for the finish, their, uh, double team maneuver called the, uh, they were going to go for the leap of faith, you know, where, uh, Charlie Haas has, the, has him on the ropes, and then Sheldon was, would flip over and land on Red's back. But before that could happen, Kenny King springboard dove onto Sheldon Benjamin, getting him out of the way. And then eventually, Red Titus wound up rolling up Charlie Haas, one, two, three, title to all nights of the new champs. The place went insane for, the, for this. You know, and I gotta admit, I, I actually popped too. I wanted, to, I wanted to see those guys win. Um, so then, you know, then afterwards, uh, Haas and Benjamin, uh, you know, attacked the All Night Express, but the you know, the champs uh, got back up, and and they headed to the back, you know, with the belts. Um, that match was also that was good too, and it was nice, you know, it's, like I say, you know, good. Um, you know, I like that they had the titles change hands here. I had a feeling they would do that, you know, because it's like you know, it's like they kind of had to, you know, with the whole story of they won the proving ground match months ago against Wrestling's greatest tag team, who had the belts at the time. Then a final battle, Red Titus's leg got injured and he was out. So it, it made sense to have it, you know, to have it come full circle and end here with with, with the All Knights getting the titles. Um, then before the main event, you know, Steve Carino, who of course is Kevin Steen's manager, or does commentary for his matches, comes out. He says he's proud to be evil, and you know he's going to do commentary for the main event and so forth. Um, you know, and then he ragged on Jim Cornette, and then Cornette came out and said that you know if Carino is going to be a ringside. You know, doing commentary, that's all right. But he's going to, the Cornette says that he'll be at ringside too to, because if Carino gets involved in the match, Cornette will, will do something about it. Uh, so that was, that was a good, uh, that, was, that was a good, that, that was a good back and forth right there with Cornette and Carino there. So, so then after we get the, uh, you know, Richard and, Ste and Steen come out, and by, uh, the fans were so behind Steen, it was ridiculous and crazy. Uh, you know, and the introductions were made, you know, and everything. Out comes Kyle O'Reilly. And he tells Richards that, you know, he's got too much respect for him, so he's not going to stab him in the back. He's going to stab him in the F and I. And it was like, you know, he, he pretty much tells um, 
daily that you know there's a, you know no more Team Richards, Team Ambition is done. He's pretty much looking out to break out on his own and be a single a single breakout star without having to follow in the in the shadow of Davy Richards. I got a uh, good heel promo from Kyle O'Reilly here. I mean, I, I think this guy this guy's this guy this guy could be something. This guy could be something. He's got the tools to be a, a great uh, great you know, performer. I, I mean, not that he isn't already, but you know, I mean, I, I think they just elevated him further last night. So then we get to ROH champion Kevin Steen and Davey Richards. Uh, crazy match. And this was, like I said, this was the other, you know, I put it in all caps, really awesome match. Um, this and the hybrid match were the two best matches of the show. Um, these guys just had a crazy, insane plunger brawl. Um, you know, they got tabled out from under the ring. They got a, they got a ladder out. Uh, you know, at one point, I forget who, but Bobby Cruz got taken out. I forget who kicked him or whatever. Uh, then, the, yeah, Davey kicked the, kicked the referee, and then another referee came out, and um, he was pinning, you know, he, Steen pinned Richards, and Richards kicked out, so then Steen got pissed at the ref, and he gave the, that ref a package pile driver. So we got no ref. So then Richards got a chain, he tied it to his ankle, and he kicked Steen in the head with it. Like, oh man, I thought that was you know, that was nuts. I mean, I, I thought it was gonna, I thought it was going to be ble- Steam was going to be bleeding after that one. But uh, there were a lot of crazy spots here. You know, there was a power draw. I, Davey Richards went for the DR driver on the ladder. You know, they're, they're down. I think he did a double stop on Steam through a table. I think there might have been a couple more tables broken. A lot of crazy, insane stuff happening here. Uh, so then uh, Jimmy Jacobs comes in. Uh, he pulls a spike out of his boot. Cornette comes in, takes a spike out of Jacobs' hands. And then he was going to hit Jimmy Jacobs with it, but Karina was standing behind Cornette, and then when Cornette turned around, Karina kicked him in the balls. So then um, Jericho, uh, Jericho, I'm sorry, uh, Jimmy Jacobs got the spike back, Davy Duck uh, and Suplex Jacobs into the corner, uh, and then Steen actually got the spike, and he hit Davy in, in, in the nuts. And, you know, and, then, and then he hit the package pile driver, three count, Steen retains the title. Really, really crazy, insane match. Uh, like I said, this is this is must see. This was must see stuff here. Um, great back and forth, plum to brawl. Uh, they did. They did. Really did a lot of great stuff. And the fans were. Re- you know, the fans were really behind Steen. It was. Like, it was so amazing. You know. I, um, yeah. So then afterwards, you know, Steen got on the mic. And he put, you know, he's, he's, he said that he's called Jim Cornette a hypocrite or whatever, but he says that he's a hypocrite too because when he said that he didn't respect Davy Richards, this and that, he just said that so that he could get a title shot. And he says that he does respect Davy Richards and he says that Davy is the best in the world. And then he rags on the fans, you know, telling them this or this and that, you know, they're all losers and whatever. But the, the fans cheered everything he was saying anyway. It was, kind of, it was, it was really kind of weird. But, uh, you know. And uh, you know he, he mentions how the New York fans or whatever the fans have turned on. You know, every, everybody who's been the Ring of Honor World Champion, the fans have turned on. And he says they can't turn on him because he doesn't give a shit about them, about the fans. But you know, like I said, they still cheered him after everything he said. You know, and now uh, he said that he'll be the last Ring of Honor World Champion. And he said that you know um, he's at the last Best in the World show, which was on my birthday last year. Uh, he said he came back and he said F Ring of Honor, and this year. He was going to say what it really means, and he says, "F New York City." Uh, good promo from Steen, you know. I guess it's you know, uh, the guy's really good on the mic, you know. It's uh, and uh, you know, even as you know, it's like you know, he he's not you know, he's not like your typical um, you know, jacked up looking guy. You know, he's kind of you know, kind of looks like Samoa Joe, you know, more like Samoa Joe in comparison. But you know, it's like it's it's uh, you know, the guy's good. The, the guy's really good, you know. And um, I guess it looks like they're going to be. It looks like he's going to be doing. Uh, they're going to. Yeah, the, the fans have just turned the face, you know, so he's going to be a baby face just because, you know, they're cheering him, you know, it's like he'll keep the heel character and whatever, but it looks like the fans are going to cheer him no matter what. And, um, you know, and it looks like Davey Richards might actually be turning heel, um, you know, just about, uh, you know, kicking the rap and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I, I, even uh, as I was watching this, you know, it, it felt like, you know, like back in um, WrestleMania 13 when they did the Bret Hart Steve Austin double turn, I kind of feel like that's what they were setting up for here. Um, and we'll we'll see if that's what they do, and if they, they if they do, I can actually see this working just as well as that did. Um, so yeah, overall, this was this was a great show, well worth checking out. Uh, you know, and like I said, all the matches were really enjoyable. The opener was, you know, like I say, it was off because the ropes were loose. Um, Edwards Homicide, great match. Cole O'Reilly, one of the two best matches of the night. Finley Elgin, 
great, uh, you know, great uh, Matt wrestling match. The two bikes, Mondo and Bennett, it was all right. It was solid. You know, they had Mondo get the three count. Uh, it was all right. Yeah, uh, maybe one, maybe one of the weaker parts I thought of the show. Then you had the you know, tag title match was awesome. Uh, TV title, yeah, you know, um, and and Steen and uh, Richards the world title, great stuff. Um, but like, you know, so uh, that'll do it for me right now. You know, and like I say, uh, tomorrow actually is my birthday. I'll be thirty. So I'll be back, maybe. Yeah, I'll be back. I guess tomorrow for a special birthday video, or maybe Wednesday. I don't know yet. For my uh, regular world recap. So until then, this is Tony Grizzly Tone signing off. Take care, everybody.